So we're missing a torso and a head. They say one man's trash... Oh, my God. It's different. ..is another man's treasure. Oh, my word. Wow! It's something else. Nowhere is that more true than here, at Lots Road Auction House in Chelsea. What the hell is that? Oh, it's enormous fun. I'm still hunting for a gold Afghan carpet. 1350. This is where London's wealthy elite... You sure you can do without it, ma'am? OK, 14. 1400. ..come to refill their mansions with the latest trends. Is that sort of a play on pomegranates and stuff? It's a vagina, Nick. Yeah. I think this place is a bit nuts, isn't it? But with an auction every week, the staff are under constant pressure... Who exactly this? this? You're not taking it anyway. ..to find new items that will make the most money. I've spent here for £40,000. Yeah. I think the monkeys are definite. ..and keep boss Roger Ross off their backs. I've got a short fuse, man. No, uh, no, no, but you need to apologise to me. I will hold resentments against member of staff. I will be watching for how they behave, and then I might explode at them. Welcome to the strangest auction house in Britain. Going, going, gone. It's Monday morning at Lots Road. And new items are flooding in through the door. With an auction happening every Sunday, the valuers are always on the hunt for desirable goods. That looks armless, doesn't it? Stick that down there. Oh, more inside. They come from Spain. First off. What everybody is not looking for. Yeah, right. Oh, spooky. Oh, chappy. Oh. <laughs> Look at that expression. Don't know whether I like it or whether it freaks me out. Yeah. Wait, yeah. Is everyone happy with that? Good. Well yeah. done, everyone. Right. Good. Thanks for your really help. help. Cheers. Huh? Uh, uh, no to that one. And no to that one. Many of the lots are supplied by regular dealers. Others via emails from people keen to clear out their cast-offs. Because you're looking at hundreds and hundreds, well, probably into the thousands of emails every week, you have to be very selective, no to that. We actually, surprisingly, reject lots of items every week, hundreds, because they're not going to sell. We get to know what the buyer's like, and no to that one. And what the buyer's like is the rare, the quirky, and the luxurious. Wow. I wonder how much we charge for such a large table. The answer is not enough. Despite the valuer's best efforts to keep the quality high, boss Roger Ross is concerned that standards are slipping. This what do I think of that? It's been there. I think it's an insult to the firm. It's just outrageous, and it shouldn't be here. It's got to go. You wouldn't accept those, would you, Andy? Well, the beds. These beds? No. You look at the space they take up, you go, no, sorry, we're not accepting those. There's another one, look. Why anyone would accept that bedstead? Someone somewhere is living in the past. I do not want to be disturbed by looking at low price, poor quality, substandard lots. Please note, we are not accepting any more beds. Something is going wrong in the bedding department. This is not Harrods, thank you. Once the lots are in place, the doors are opened to the viewing public. Always eager to see what's new is auction house regular, wealthy businesswoman Galia. It's an excitement. Every time I've been this here so many times, but every time I walk through the doors, it's just like the unexpected. Originally from Uzbekistan, Galia has been a familiar face at Lots Road for over 10 years. Nice for a carnival, isn't it? <laughs> 
she's always on the lookout for unusual furnishings and original art. Hmm. I think he's hypnotized me. <laughs> Do you liken yourself to, to a tiger in any way? I'm a panther, personally. <laughs> yes. And I drive a Jaguar. So I guess it's a, <laughs> it's a long tradition. <laughs> her way up from humble beginnings, Galia now owns eight properties, all crying out for the best Lots Road can offer. They include a flat in Kensington overlooking the Royal Albert Hall and a Georgian manor house in Sussex. The red door. When the guests leave, we say from red door to red carpet. They, they, they like that. Even higher. Perfect. Voila. Galia has converted this Sussex pile into a weight loss retreat for her discerning clients. It comes complete with 15 guest bedrooms, a swimming pool and spa. On the left. It's a mixture of styles. It's uh, Art Deco wall lights from Lots Road, beautiful classic portraits from Lots Road, uh, Art Deco mirror from Lots Road, Lots Road, Lots Road, Lots Road, all the chairs, Lots Road, fireplace, Lots Road, chandelier, Lots Road. And one more beautiful thing, actually. Voila, Lots Road. Where else would you put your throne? In the bathroom. Yes, kind of. Oh. Yes. Galia is on the lookout for a new portrait for the entrance hall. A nice, noble old man. I'm hoping to replace him with a nice, noble young man. <laughs> yes, time for a change. <laughs> yes. She's hoping that this week's auction will provide just what she's looking for. OK, guys, hi, thank you very much. At the auction house, Roger has called a staff meeting. Um, I've got a few things that I want to go through. Has anyone... He's come up with a plan and a new mantra to boot. We are intending to have better and fewer, better quality lots, fewer rubbish lots, would actually make this place sparkle. Because when it looks good, it looks really good. But if we took out the 80 pound lots, 120 pound lots, uh, we may have a chance of actually uh, enjoying some more success. The unsold rate last week is chronic. It, it, it's, it's currently like a loss leader, and that's what Sainsbury's do, not us. I'm exhausted. It's been a very emotional day. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. For the upcoming okay. auction, the valuers must now reject any items worth less than £500. The idea of the sale is to have a smaller sale, better lots and higher value lots, and that's fine, I understand that. But this specifics with regards to the pricing can rub people up the wrong way, basically, and that includes vendors and people who work here. The man responsible for enforcing Roger's fewer and better policy is new general manager, William Shuttleworth. We've played lots of tennis over the weekend and, um, um, and ate well too, slept well and feel more tired than I did on Friday, but I don't know why. A former major in the British Army, William is still finding his feet. I know nothing about an auction house. I don't know much about antiques. I'm not quite sure whether I would could sort of go for a, a reindeer or a gorilla. I mean, that's not really my style, but it's not important. And it's got to make sure that the the income from the from the business is is maximised. Oh dear. William recently replaced former manager Martin, who is now head of valuations. Constantly clearing gangways, you see. It gets very, very busy. If, you, if I ever see things in the gangway, I have to move it because it's health and safety for the staff and the clients. People still phoning me up. Hi, I'm going to be late. Hi, I'm off sick. And I'm like, well, thanks for telling me, but there's a new manager. 
William has spent his first two weeks getting on top of the paperwork. Now, Martin thinks he needs to spend more time on the shop floor. What I'm proposing to do yeah. is I am taking uh, William round and I'm pointing out all the things that you would not be happy with. Oh, OK. Obviously, this is the first walkabout we've done and he's been in his office for two and a half weeks. That could be a habit. This tour we're about to have is going to be a wake-up call for William. Welcome to the real manager's job. Yeah. Thank you very much. OK, good. Are you ready, William? I am ready. Good, OK. Yeah. This light bulb needs changing. That's been off for two weeks, Hello. as does that light bulb. OK. All this needs to be cleared immediately. 3rd of August, why have we got here? Embarrassing. These are pictures. This is all saleable stuff. Religiously, I used to go in and have these rooms clear, but obviously I haven't been doing it now. So if we come here, 24th of August, look. This is not, this is not managed, is it? Roger gets very angry, so he'll come up to me. Let's pretend I'm the manager today, and he'll go, look, what are you doing, Martin? Why haven't you dealt with this? And he'll have a go at me. So that's what I'm telling you, because he'll then be now having a big go at you. So all these things... Well, I'll have a big go at everybody else. Perfect. OK. I was aware that there was quite a lot of, dare I say it, stuff lurking. And that will, of course, be something that I will now attend to. This is a classic. In fact, I'm not... Overconfident, I'm just happy. And I really am happy. I like this. It's great, great fun. Great fun. And that's what it should be when you go to work. You should enjoy it. And I do. Each week, I have to toughen up with William and say, look, we've eased you in. There's actually a hell of a lot you're going to be in charge with. So he'll either take to it really well and manage the sale room so they're all immaculate, or he might find it a struggle. Where's the paperwork that we're going to go through with Tom? Uh, Tom has it in his hand. Right. This lady bought those. I, I don't care. There were two That's irrelevant. It's irrelevant, Tom. You're going to have to phone her and say Roger's demanding it goes to charity, or I'll deliver it back to her house. OK, fine. Thank you. With the fewer and better auction looming, the valuers are under pressure from boss Roger Ross to bring in quality goods worth at least £500. If we take anything else at that price, someone's head's going to roll. OK. No, 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 no. The idea is to appraise the goods, to look at them and consider the new rules and go, do they fall within the new guidelines or are they substandard? It's not difficult. In a bid to carry out Roger's orders, Valuer Andy Mackay is going on safari south of the river. I've come over down to Wandsworth. Uh, I got a phone call from my old friend Alexis, and he was telling me that he's having clear out of some of his um, objects that he deals in. Hi, Andy. Oh, hi. How are you doing? Hi. Nice to see you. Nice to see, see you. you. Yeah, yeah, come in. This is it, really. Um, this is where all the, the big stuff is. The giraffes and the zebras and bears. It's and... extraordinary, isn't it? It's so unexpected in an industrial set in one's life. I know. <laughs> and his friend Alexis hires his collection out for films and photo shoots. But he's currently got some spares he wants to sell. I've got a lot of moose at the moment. This is my sort of surplus moose. And what sort of price would you need for that? I think 2800 Two eight to three five. Yeah, would that do? Yeah, yeah. We've got this marmot over here, um, right. which, which I can, I can let go. So they're and part of the beaver family. They're the same family, yeah. And if you looked at it from the front or put it up high, that looks just like a exactly. Beaver they have horrible something. teeth, aren't they? Yeah. What's it so going rate for a marmot these days? If I can get four hundred and fifty for it, then I think it's highly probable we'll get four fifty. Yeah. Yeah, I'll go four fifty to six fifty. Why not? Okay. If Andy's new goods sell at the top end of their estimate, he could have just netted the auction house over two grand.
Hiya, is Nick around? Staff announcement. Nick Carter at evaluations, please. Nick Carter at evaluations. Don't tell him it's Nigel. It's Nigel. Oh, no. Also hoping to make a big sale at the upcoming auction is regular lots road vendor Nigel Kingston, a self-taught artist. Nigel already has a painting in this week's sale called Pilot's Eye View, and he's come up with a plan to make it irresistible to buyers. Yes, indeed it all. He just needs to convince arts valuer Nick Carter. I've known Nigel for about four or five years cost me vast amounts of money in uh, uh, dry cleaning bills because he drops his pictures in completely soaking wet and they get all over my clothes. Nick, you know the um, pilot's eye view I've had in... I was messing around last night and I had a similar background painting and I've put these giraffes in. If you can let me go outside for an hour or two and paint three giraffes on the big one, I can make that into a much more sellable painting. What had you taken to make you think, I could improve that picture by putting giraffes Well, uh, I mean, it's called Head in the Clouds. And if you think they've got long necks... There is some thought to it, though. There is a little bit, yeah. It wasn't just, do you know what, I think I'll put giraffes no. in there. I think she give it to me, I like it. Is that what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Lots Road's my bread and butter. You know, I come here every week. They're fed up with the sight of me. They don't sell some weeks and they do others. It's live art. If I sell this in Camden Market, I'll be lucky to get 50 quid for it. If I sell it here, it might be worth 500. That'll do. But Nigel's live art may not be enough to keep the wolf from the door. This week, more than any other, he desperately needs a sale. The reason I need the money is I've got to move out of this delightful property at the in, in a month's time. I think I might have lost my deposit here. Oh, I'll, give it a, I'll give it my best shot. No, it's gone, isn't it? It's already a um, piece of art in itself. I know it's a mess. I know it's a disgrace. It doesn't really bother me a great deal, I'm afraid. Tell me, what, what's this picture down here? Oh, that's, <laughs> that's my old school charter house. I used to be a lot more normal. I used to have an advertising agency, so I used to live quite a corporate life and didn't really feel I was adding a lot to the world. And now, from a personal point of view, I do. People may well judge that you've had a great opportunity in life and, you know, what are you doing with it? But, you know, I might have the last laugh when I'm 75 if my paintings are selling for 150,000 each. Back at Lots Road, buyers are starting to browse what's on offer in Sunday's auction. It's really old fashioned. Oh dear, firstly, so <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe anyone's paying, paying for them. Oh, it's quite good. Marketing duo Simon and Harriet are looking for a signature mascot for a club about to open in Chelsea. It's called Beaver Lodge. Probably to be a little bit tongue-in-cheek, a bit cheeky. I hope people come down and they're like, yeah, I got beavered last night, and like... We've got some sort of hashtag beavered slogan things, which is going quite well. Yeah, or some sort of beaver fever, which is Yeah, trending. beaver fever, uh, beavers open all week, stuff like that. I think the sort of stuff we'd be after would be sort of taxidermy. Yeah. Animals you'd probably find in North America that could be around a sort of supposed 
Beaver Lodge in Wyoming. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. What is it? That's, um, that's a hog or uh, a boar, maybe. I know nothing about animals. Mm. So that could be actually very North American. I wouldn't, I wouldn't know. Is that the sort of thing you'd ride in a bucking? Yeah, it's like a bucking bronco kind of thing. Is a bronco a horse or a...? No, it's like a bronco is like a cow, isn't it? Hashtag Moose Mondays. Hashtag Moose at Beaver Lodge. <laughs> <laughs> It looks like a be it looks like a beaver. I'm pretty sure that's a beaver. He looks overweight to me. <laughs> Five hundred quid, six hundred quid. Maximum. I think we need to do a bit of research. Um, it'd be fairly embarrassing if we went back with something that was from Africa <laughs> and wasn't it's from North fair. America. <laughs> Roche Bobois. Yeah. I think that's quite fun on a, on a grey October day. With Andy's acquisition at £650 already gathering interest, he's embracing fewer and better. The same can't be said for his colleagues. So here we are. Here's the Rolling Stones busy having fun. But someone hasn't been uh, listening to the uh, minimum £500. And they put in that for 250 to 350 And this is only 180 to 200. But again, actually, look. 250 pounds. So, so yeah, another example of gross disobedience by my fellow valuers. If I was the management and I'd given clear instructions, I think, yeah, I think it would be annoyed. I think I'd be annoyed. But I hope, I hope William doesn't get too annoyed. Jace, those silk rugs. As general manager, it's down to William to enforce the new rules. If the staff have any issues, they've been told to report to him. So just, yeah, year. so this is last year. Mm -hmm. So as you see, a big percentage increase, like to like, this, this year to last year. Hello, Tom. Uh, slight confusion. If it's got 500 in the estimate at all, then it's just about acceptable. So if we say three to five or four to five or, or you're it's 500. squeezing me. Well, otherwise, it's going to be a very, very tight sell. All of Nick's pictures have got to be pulled out. They're all 200 quid. It's 500 pounds. That's the last. That's the rule. But we've, the rule. there's always exceptions. Let's stick with what Roger said. OK, perfect. As long as we don't. I just don't want to have an argument at this stage. OK. Do what was, right, do as we're told. Right. So this was interesting. This was actually on the front cover. Sorry to interrupt. Will you do sort of three to 500, or does the reserve have to be 500? Right. So I've got a fabulous painting that I think might sell for 500, but I think if we put it 500 upwards, people might not... I, I'm try, not trying to be difficult, I'm trying to raise the value. Yeah, but I don't think people are going to buy it for 500. Right, I think they might pay 300. Well, I, I would have thought in that case they probably might pay 500 right. for it. We wouldn't want to be firm on this one yeah. today. I know. I understand where you're coming from. Right. Try it. Thanks. Thanks. No, and nothing wet. I'm getting confused, Nick. I'm getting very confused. I am. I'm very... I'm now very confused. Despite William's plans to keep things in order, tempers are fraying. It's not to do with me. It's not to do with me. Why did you go and talk? What do you mean, why is it? Okay? I've been told I'm not having an argument about you know, what we should or shouldn't have done. On William's instruction, modern salesroom manager Tom has withdrawn some cheap paintings that arts valuer Nick had earmarked for the auction. You're saying don't do it, and he's saying do it. Martin, can you speak to Nick and clarify? You tell him that. Rules here are very flexible, or nothing's written in stone, and it changes from minute to minute, so it's just a bit confusing. Hello, Are you unhappy? Everyone's struggling to uh, clarify the rules. 500. So we're we saying the estimate has to start from 500 upwards. Correct. So it can't be three to five. No. It can't be four to six. No. Uh, yes, it can. It can be four to six. Yes, but well, four's beneath five. Yes, but five's in the middle. I'll tolerate that. So it can't be three to five, but it can be four to six. Yes. Not going to change. No, it's not going to change. Roger's not going to change it. I'm going to. Make sure he doesn't actually, because actually I want this to. I'm sure he went anyway, but I mean I want this to stick. 
There's no confusion as far as I'm concerned. We, we're trying to make minimum lot values 500 quid. I think everybody's beginning to get that message, as you can see. It's a little bit more, um, being a little bit more robust, perhaps, than in the past. That's all. That's all. It's getting busy at Lots Road. As more items arrive for this week's fewer and better sale. All this lovely brown furniture. Wouldn't you like one? I would. With General Manager William enforcing the new £500 rule, the sales rooms are starting to look less shabby and more chic. Very nice leather chairs. And comfortable, too. They'll sell well. Fewer and Better seems to have brought in some interesting lots. This is a Danish chair. I took it off some chap from California. He said he used to smoke doobies in it, in the hills. And that's a really nice chair. And that might be a sleeper. It might go for a lot more than I think. We got the wing, which is really good. That's a bit of a showstopper. That is a Rolf Benz sofa. And it should sell, because it's in brand new condition. By keeping the value quite high, it sort of got rid of a lot of the dross, to be fair. Right, so I'm going to have to go in first, right? Yeah. Andy also has some new offerings. Several king-sized mirrors from an office in Mayfair. How many have you got? Oh, how many do you want? Oh, I think it's funny. It's not funny. You know it's not funny. But not everyone agrees that bigger is better. Six unsellable huge mirrors. It's just what we didn't need. There's three more over there. They're great, aren't they? They're quite big, Andy. Uh, just because you live in a very little house doesn't mean that everyone in London does. What were you thinking when you said yes to these rather... I was thinking, large... how can I help the customer and help the company, as I always think. That is the sort of process. I don't think will it fit in Tom's pokey little house in North London. Sorry, guys. Oh, no. Thanks. Also in danger of confusing bigger with better is Nigel. In desperate need of money for the deposit on a new flat, he's squeezing in one more painting for this Sunday's auction. At 10 foot by 5 foot, it's his biggest work of art to date. It's Battersea Park. Because it's impressionist, I want to... It's not going to be high detail, but it, hopefully, particularly from an enormous distance, it's going to look fabulous. You never want to be too close up to one of my paintings, to be perfectly honest. About a quarter of a mile away is good. So far, Nigel has been working from memory, but now he wants to move the canvas to the park itself to capture its true atmosphere. Why did I bother? It'll rain in a minute. Yeah, I think it adds a bit more charm to it. Yeah, I think that's all I need to do here. It's a shame, because it's so beautiful. But um, we need to get some more of the park in elsewhere, I think. Life is good. Whoa! Get some dogs in it. Yeah, absolutely. Nigel is hoping to sell his new masterpiece for a whopping two and a half grand. It could be the answer to all his money worries.
hoping to buy some new furnishings at this week's auction is wealthy businesswoman Galia. Matthew. Today, she's taking her husband, Michael, to see her latest renovation project, a cottage in Sussex, overlooking Battle Abbey. It's a bit barren at the moment, you know, so we kind of started uh, redecorating it, and uh, everything is pretty much dictated by the colors of the room, which was inspired by Picasso Blue Period. I don't know why. Galia's husband, Michael, works in the motor trade and has very different ideas about decor, despite 23 years of marriage. I like classical things. I do love old buildings, and I like the classic looks and, and things. But Galia's taste can be completely, you know, absurd to me, you know, because I am very, you know, I'm, you know, very conservative. I think putting something here, nice and cute, will be great just here and then maybe something here just above that will be great i can imagine it will be nice to sit in an armchair here in that position just overlooking the battle abbey i think it will be nice that should be a two-seater here but no no it's going to be a nice armchair overlooking battle abbey because it has to be at an angle and i do not like your choice of paintings or things you put on walls speak <coughs> your mind so, dear so you put them up and then i'll change them for something else later you can dream on, dear. Thank you. Yeah, that's fine. You know, things stay where they are. They stay put. Yeah, I know. At Lots Road, the last few items are being put on display for the impending auction. The question is, will boss Roger Ross think they're up to scratch? Have you had any of these nests of tables, Tom? These three heavy ones here. So I'm just looking at the quality of that one. It's a fabulous piece. Beautifully made and would have cost several thousand pounds, I would think. That's a fine looking chest of drawers. Wow, that's 500 pounds worth of anyone's money. I love those feet. See, look at that. Now we could dance down there and it'd be fine. I walked down and everything I saw was nice. And I suppose that's really it. it it's almost like they're going to be working in a different place. Of course, it's the same place. But if you take away all those low priced tatty items, it's going to be. It's, I think it's quite exciting. It's Sunday, and the first fewer and better auction at Lots Road. This is the exciting part. Yeah, this is where it all comes together. We've put a lot of effort in to put it all together, and I think we've displayed the stuff well as well. Whether we get any praise out of Roger for it, I don't know whether we will or not. Roger's hoping for this figure. He'll always hope for a high figure, and we have last year's target to beat. So as long as every department does well, then maybe we'll beat last year. That's what it's all about, beat the figures, money, to keep Roger placated. Next up, 94, similar. Michael is bidding on Galia's behalf until she arrives from work. Is anyone going to bid me 200? He's Do under strict like instructions to buy a painting for their manor house and blue furniture for their cottage. You're a very good husband. Uh, oh, no, no, no. It, you've got to make for an easy life. <laughs> because if we argue, I always lose. Nigel is hoping he's got all bases covered. Got three paintings in. I'm really looking for someone, a giraffe and dog lover who goes to Battersea Park. So we're looking for some quirky customers, but then there's an awful lot of competition today because there's a few Damien Hursts in and an awful lot of good painting, so I need, I need some luck. The first of Nigel's paintings to go under the hammer is his giraffe-adorned masterpiece, Head in the Clouds. You do get butterflies. You do think, well, you know, I, I could walk away with two or three thousand pounds uh, banked from this, or I could walk away with absolutely nothing.
Well, start the bidding off there. Four thousand pounds on that. Four thousand. Four thousand. Who'll bid me four thousand? At Lots Road, the fewer and better auction is in full swing. One, two, three. You got it, so that's yours. New general manager William is hoping for record sales. So far, in first impressions are pretty good. We've had some pretty exciting things sold downstairs, and it's going well up here too. Gone at 800, sold to buyer number 618. Okay. 250 on that lot, 250 on the Next up is one of the star attractions. Simon and Harriet, along with their colleague Sam, are eager to buy a North American beaver for a new club. 650, we've got the, uh, another taxidermy there. Um, 400 pounds on that lot. However, the item they're bidding for is actually a French marmot. 400, 400, 420, 450, so. 450. Gentlemen's bid at 450 pounds. I'm going to sell it, sell it 450. Gone to you, sir, at 450. What's your number? We would have gone up to 600 or maybe a bit more, so we're happy with that. Yeah, we're probably going to get a taxi and make sure he's very safe and <laughs> strap him in. Just a few hours to go until the end of the auction, Galia has managed to escape from work. Gone. Most of the items she desperately desires have already been sold, and she's hoping that husband Michael has bought them. How's it going? Lost... Yeah, not bad. Yeah. Didn't manage to get anything, though. No. Oh, no way. Nothing at all, no. It went well over the uh, top. Oh, no chance. There you go. Well, it's your turn, It's yeah. not like you, is it? Yeah, well, You're no. normally go I wasn't in the mood. 250. I'm going 280, though. 280, 290. Oh, you didn't buy this arm chair, no? Well done, enjoy. 328. You're lucky there. Nice. Did you buy it? Selling it at 400. 942. Also out of luck so far is Nigel. His head in the clouds painting didn't sell. Now he's pinning all his hopes on Battersea Park. 257, we've got another Nigel Kingston. That's the large work there, master work almost showing there on the left um, Sunday morning in the park. And I'll start I have a potential homeless situation coming up in three weeks. So I need money and I need it now. And I'll start the bidding off there at, who will bid me 800 pounds for that? Bid me 800, anyone want to bid me 800? Do I see an £800 bid? Yes or no? 600 Five, anyone? No interest of 500 so that's a victim, that's passed. Bit shocked, actually. Um... I have to dust myself down, sleep on it, and decide what to do. I'm not quite sure at the moment. I'm 60 quid poorer and one week nearer my crisis. <laughs> Anyone bidding me 606 bid, man? 650 is here, man. Gone. Galia is also in danger of walking away empty-handed, but she's decided to check up on her husband, Michael. As somebody who congratulated my husband on acquisition, it's a lot 244. Did he maybe accidentally acquire something? Uh, he bought three things. Three things? Three things. Yeah. No way. Uh-huh. Uh, you got the Danish armchair. The is that the blue one? Uh -huh. Wow! It's nice, yes, isn't it? Yes, fantastic <laughs> well. And then you got, I think it must be a painting by Karefi, the Papi. <gasps> He's a big fat liar, sorry. <laughs> I can't believe it. What a, go you? what a good liar. Wow, thank you. Yeah, 600 going, going. Go! Uh, lock number four. Well, <laughs> James <laughs> Bond. <laughs> what a liar! <laughs> It makes I it mean, more exciting. 
Yeah, you see, most women will acquire bags and jewelry, and I acquire blue chairs. You know. Yeah, she also acquires yeah. jewelry and bags as well. Have no fear. Oh, not for three days, I have it. <laughs> Pounds. I'm going to sell at 800. Once, twice, three times. What's your number? So at eight, five, six. Sold. You got it. So that's it. Five, five, six. The final lots are now up for auction, and the sales room is still buzzing with buyers. Thank you very much indeed. It's frantic. There's loads going on. I'm starting to feel like it's going to work. So now I'm, I'm feeling happy. Once, twice, three times at a thousand. Sold a thousand. It's strong buying uh, and lots of bidding on the phone. So there's a lot of interest, and there's a lot of interest in the good things. And uh, 1,600 pounds, 17. Anyone want to go? I bought a uh, sofa, the orange leather sofa, and uh, a coffee table by Conrad. 322, are you? Thanks for coming. Yeah, well done. You've got that. We've got a uh, painting for the, our bathroom. And we got a painting for the guest bedroom. I think this place is a bit nuts, isn't it? You know, uh, yeah, it's really good fun. It's nuts and fun. Five hundred on the net. I'm five hundred, five fifty now. So no, I'm at five hundred pounds and selling. Then going, going, gone. And is that it? I'm going to celebrate, yeah. Andrew. Let's go for a skip. Come on, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh. <laughs> The staff and the buyers may be happy, but the big question is, has Fewer and Better boosted Roger's profits? Nice to you, Bye. Yes, he has gone up by. That's oh, by, uh, uh, by another, nearly another thirty thousand quid on the hammer. That's good. Bright and early next morning, William is busy crunching the numbers. Probably done more than a quarter of a million quid's worth of sale, sales yesterday, which is sat highly satisfactory. Oh dear, thirty percent up, Martin. Isn't it? Thirty percent up. Yeah, thirty percent up. Wow. Sometimes when Roger comes in on after a good set, he can be yeah, miserable. He can be yeah, really, that, really angry. A good point. Sometimes he wants even more. Why wasn't it more? Is the yeah. question. He's constantly driving. You know, that's exactly. why he's built up this empire. Double bed, ensuite bathroom, shower. Nice. That's great. I love it. Nigel has had to leave his London flat, but he's found a new place to live. He's moved into a holiday park in Hampshire. Wonder how long it'll be before I wreck this place. Oh, that's coming off. But things are looking up for Nigel. He's just been given several private commissions. And he's managed to sell his Battersea Park painting for £700. Very pleased. I went to a nice home, a previous customer. He's very pleased with that, and it looks great. Back in Chelsea, Beaver Lodge is now open for business, with Lots Road's taxidermy taking pride of place at the bar. <laughs> we love beavers. We do. <laughs> Beaver selfie, that happens quite a lot. <laughs> He's our mascot. We're loving him. <laughs> Over at Lots Road, Roger is so pleased with the fewer and better sales figures that he's reaching into his own pocket and taking the staff out for a drink. So, good evening, folks. We are celebrating fewer and better. Who wouldn't want to have fewer and better things? Ex-lovers, fewer and better. I've got to stop there. Uh, so I want to raise your glasses. Can we please? 
You know, I see your glasses and we'll do a little clink. Cheers, everyone. Thank you. I'm coming round. Fewer and better mantra, I think, probably has been vindicated. The way ahead must be upwards and onwards. <laughs> upwards, onwards, better, bigger, call it what you like, but just move the whole operation uh, up market. Look good. How was it? Wonderful. Well, I feel like I'm settling in. I think I'm beginning to feel like a piece of the furniture, maybe.